Hi, I'm Jennifer Richmond, and this is my informative speech number two. This is Angie Burnett, audience member number one. Ryan Burnett, audience member number two. And Joe Van Hook, audience, audience member, member number, three. number three. So who here has ever done a performance review Ooh. for an employee? Okay, I want to ask you, was it an enjoyable experience, or did you kind of struggle through it uncomfortably? That's always a struggle. Answer. It is one of the most dreaded activities that a manager can do and one of the most time consuming activities for managers, but it's also one of the most important activities. Um, so I worked in HR a little over 20 years and a big part of my job the last two years is to help managers appraise their employees. So there's a lot to conducting a performance appraisal, so, but here I'm only going to talk about three basic preparation steps. So I'd like to describe for you the three main components in preparing for an employee appraisal. The first step is to evaluate the employee's performance over the current performance period. The second step is that you'll want to establish goals and objectives for the next performance period. And then finally, you'll want to evaluate their training and development needs in order to further them in their career progress. So step one, evaluating their performance over the current performance period. You want to make sure that your assessment is fair, accurate, and objective. So you'll want to start off by reviewing the job requirements for that employee to make sure you have a basis for what job requirements there are in order to evaluate them against those requirements. You want to avoid any type of discriminatory bias. According to John Ivansevich in Human Resources Management, you should avoid any decisions based on race, sex, national origin, religion, or age. Those are all protected classes, and you should not use them as a basis for making any type of employment decision. <clears throat> and finally, you might try to get some input from others. So you might ask your employee, employee for input on how they feel they did with their performance for the current performance period. You might talk to some internal and external candidates who have direct contact with that employee and who you trust to give you some fair and honest um, objective uh, observations about the employee. You should provide your employee with some constructive feedback, both positive and corrective. And ideally, the, the feedback should be done throughout the entire year. So, what you should be doing is throughout the year, whenever something good or possibly negative happens, you should make a note about that for the employee, put it in your file, tell them about it, make sure they know so they're not hearing about it. There's no surprises during the employee performance meeting. So make sure that you are providing them with ongoing feedback and that it is sincere and considerate. Be sure that you always evaluate the behavior and not the person. So in providing some constructive feedback, you want to be very detailed uh, and specific about the feedback. You want to include dates, quotes, outcomes. These are some examples here. So instead of saying you have a poor attitude and you're hard to get along with, and you really want to avoid that word attitude. That's very hard to define, and it just sounds very negative. Just say on several occasions, insert the dates. I asked you to do something, and you disagreed and argued with me in front of other employees. Also, another example, needs to get better at reviewing work. Instead of writing that, you might say more specifically, at times it seems that you get overwhelmed with the volume of work and there have been errors that should be caught. Many times you're working late nights or weekends to get a project finished. This will usually lead to more errors. Part of this could be alleviated by better planning and time management. So there you've given them a suggestion for improving the performance right there. Step two, you want to establish goals and objectives for the upcoming performance period. Ideally, you want to establish three to five goals for each employee. Um, according to Robert Maddox in his book, Effective Performance Appraisals, a goal is a statement of results to be achieved. You want to make sure that your employee's goals align with the organization's goals and be sure to create a line of sight where you can, which means that you want to demonstrate to your employee any kind of direct or indirect impact they have or contributions they make toward the organization's success. In setting goals, a very common way to set goals is using the SMART method. 
And this is an acronym. So the S starts for, stands for specific. The goal should be clear, unambiguous. Just like in the example before, you wouldn't want to give an employee a goal that says improve, improve customer service. You want to tell the employee exactly the quantity, quality, cost, et cetera, what's expected from them. M is for measurables. You want to make sure that employees have milestones to measure their progress against. You want to make sure that it's action-oriented, so actually use action words when you're describing your goals and give them suggested, suggested action items to reach their goals. Make sure it's realistic. You want them to stretch and have to um, reach uh, according to their capabilities, but you also want it to be a tangible. And then make sure it's time sensitive. Um, deadlines can always be changed, but if you don't set a deadline, often goals will get overlooked due to day-to-day -day activities, and no progress will get made on them. So step three, the last step in preparing, is to determine the training and development needs for your employee. You want to do this by gaining their input and commitment. Uh, think of some questions that you want to ask them when you sit down to meet with them. Ask them what they want to do, how you can help them, where they see themselves in a few years. Um, demonstrate any rewards that you can think of that might um, help them want to move to the next level professionally. And be sure you provide them with lots of support and if there are any barriers to their success, be sure and help them with that. So there are a lot of options to help develop your employee. Um, you can expose them to different areas of interest. And some internal options might be on-the-job training, job shadowing, you can assign them to a mentor, maybe someone in senior management, do some cross-training. <clears throat> I've even seen uh, sometimes employees will be assigned to handle the United Way campaign or manage the Habitat for Humanity house. It helps uh, establish some leadership skills. Some external options, of course, would be tuition reimbursement for degree programs, um, for certifications and then job related seminar and training. So in conclusion, to properly begin to prepare for the employee performance appraisal, you want to complete these three steps. You want to evaluate their performance over the current performance period. Second, you'll want to set goals for the next performance period. And then finally, you want to evaluate and assess any training and development needs that will help them on their career path. So identifying and completing these three components are essential to properly preparing for an employee performance appraisal. Although conducting performance appraisals is still not a fun activity for managers and very lengthy process, it's a very lengthy process, if the time is invested to properly prepare following these three steps, you should have a solid basis for your next employee performance appraisal. Thank you very much. Thank you.